What's up guys, my name is Devonte, and I sacrificed my time, so you don't have to. Now you're probably asking yourselves right now, Devonte, why the fuck did you upload so late? Well kiddos, I'm about to give you a little bit of a history lesson in being an adult. I have this thing called a job. With that job comes this thing called scheduling. With that schedule, it allows me in order to have a bit of a regiment to know when I go in and when I leave work. Today, I was scheduled to work at 7 at night, meaning I got off later at night. In this case, 3 o'clock in the morning. I am back home now and it is 4 o'clock in the morning. Throughout that shift, news was circulating around about the departure of Ricochet. How he gave his two-week notice. How he's going hasta la vista, baby. And you know what? You know what? Good for this motherfucker right here. Good for Skinny Shook Knight. Good for Macadamia Head looking at boy. I'm proud of you, Ricochet. You know what? You guys are about to get something incredibly rare right now. You ready for this? You're about to get something so extremely rare. I mean, it is so rare. The next time you see a video like this, your dad's going to come back home with the milk. That's how fucking rare this is. You're about to get a positive video. <laughs> Shudder just thinking about doing another video like this ever again, but... Objectively, I don't really see what's wrong with any side agreeing to the departure of Ricochet, whether it's Ricochet and I quote betting on himself or whether it's WWE allowing him to leave. Let me read the article for you and then we'll go more into details about what the fuck is going on here. See, I'm the kind of guy that likes to paint out context for you. I like to give you a little bit of details without throwing everything at you all at once. I know some of you guys are retarded and autistic as fuck, and I care about your well-being. I care about your health, your mental health, that is. I don't want you committing suicide because I didn't read something correct, like, you know, most people on the internet. With that being said, though, a big free agent is set to hit the market. At some point this summer, as Ricochet has reportedly given notice to WWE that he will not be returning following his current contract's expiration. PW Insider first reported the news Saturday night, adding that the high flyer is expected to be written out of storylines in advance of the contract's end, the date of which is known public oh excuse me, the date of which isn't known publicly yet. He is currently the WWE Speed Champion after winning the inaugural tournament and is set to defend against Andrade El Idolo, which was taped last night for air this upcoming week. Which, by the way, Andre Andrade actually won the belt already. I remember seeing something about that a couple of hours ago. He is the new uh, Speed Champion, if you will, which is very appropriate considering Andrade is Cuban. Devontae is Mexican. What the fuck is the difference? Shut up. They're all Spanish. Who cares? Past opponent and current AEW International Champion Will Osprey said in a recent interview that he thought Ricochet's deal might be up soon and called WWE's use of his former rival appalling. After years on the Indies, Dragon Gate, and New Japan Pro Wrestling, the 35-year-old has been in the WWE system since January of 2018 and debuted in NXT shortly afterward. He made his he Akbar. He made his main roster debut in February of 2019 and was drafted to Raw a few months later. During his time in WWE, he has held the aforementioned Speed title, the Intercontinental title, the United States title, and the NXT North American title. And you know they start talking about other shit that I don't care about. The link is down in the description box below if you want to like fill in the blanks for the shit that I don't really care about because it has no relation to this topic at hand. Now, now that you have the full context, now that you're fully caught up, now that you're no longer fucking retarded, now that you're no longer with your head far up your own ass, let's talk about this situation in regards to the positives regarding, let's actually, what should I do? Should I say, you know what? Yeah, let's look at the positives regarding uh, Ricochet and WWE. I was going to actually involve AEW in all this, but they're irrelevant as shit when it comes to this discussion because this all is going to fall upon what Ricochet wants you to do in the end of the day, which is pretty obvious. Ricochet is going to end up going to AEW. He wants to go inside there and he wants to kick flip and he wants to do some hill flips. He wants to take his bike and do a Superman. You know, he wants to do a manual. He wants to grind. He wants to do a tell flip he wants to do all this shit in AEW with Will Ospreay and you know what I don't blame the guy that's what I'm saying this is all around good news for everybody involved 
Now in the case of Ricochet, oy vey, homie, you got out of your WWE contract. Well, really, it expired, but you get what I'm trying to say. You're no longer working for WWE in the next couple of days to weeks. Good for you. You weren't doing anything in the fucking company anyways. You were absolutely floundering. You've been in the company for over six years and at this point on the main roster for over five years. If they weren't doing anything with you before, they ain't gonna do shit with you going forward. I remember you crying like a little biatch at the, what, what was it called again? The little Raw Talk tapings during COVID, like back in 2020. And he was whining and he was complaining and he was groaning. Man, my name is Ricochet and they don't appreciate my work. They want me to be able to talk on the microphone. So I'm going to do exactly that by bitching. I'm going to be one of the first superstars to let you know that I work so damn hard. Well, my name is Ricochet. Ricochet. We get it, bro. I understand. You have to actually prove yourself by going outside the company and making yourself worth a damn. So hopefully when they see you, when you're actually a big time star, maybe when you come back, you can be the next Cody Rhodes. Who knows? I don't know. Who knows? You know, I don't know. Who knows? That's what AEW is primarily used for anyways. They're a stepping stone. They're a way to actually get attention from people working in WWE and going, hey, look at me over here. I know you don't want to have the balls to put me into a position in order to thrive in your company. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly that in another company with no risk attached to it whatsoever. And I want you to watch me thrive in this company. So when I'm done using this slut right here, you can use me as much as you want and I'll be your slut. Just ask Cody Rose. That's how that usually is, okay? They're essentially using fucking AEW as nothing more than a rebound girl. And you know what? That's fine. That's okay. I don't blame Ricochet for using common sense. And who knows? Maybe one day he'll return to WWE. And maybe at that point in time, they will see him in a different light compared to what he's currently doing at the moment. Not to mention, again, I'm almost certain AEW offered him money. And Tony Khan is such a fucking mark. I wouldn't even be surprised if the whole Will Ospreay and Ricochet stuff that was happening back in 2017. Tony Khan didn't have his eyes glued to his cell phone watching all those fucking giggly tits matches. So obviously, from his perspective, he sees these guys and he, th and he says to himself, holy shit. This motherfucker's available, and I got this motherfucker under contract. I've been wanting to get my hands on this motherfucker since the inception of my company, but he was tied to these motherfuckers over here. Now I got my hands on this motherfucker. You can bet your goddamn ass Ricochet is making every bit of at least a million dollars going to AEW. You know Tony Khan is that big of a mark. You know goddamn well this man is making a bare minimum of low seven figures. At I, I will say, let's say 800000 to a million dollars, but I'm almost figuring out he's making at least a million dollars right right i think that's a that's an appropriate way to think in regards to ricochet going to aew because tony kind of step big up a mark this motherfucker paid four million dollars for kazushka okada what the fuck do you think he's gonna pay for a ricochet come on give me a break for sure at least one third of that right and like i said for ricochet a hey bro it's a lot of money that you can make there's a situation in regards to you being able to take advantage of it i don't blame you in fact, I look at what you're doing currently at the moment and people may say to themselves, Devontae, didn't you just make a video about Chad Gable and his situation and what he was doing and yada, 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 and how you were just saying you shouldn't go to AEW Chad Gable because you have a bunch of momentum and yada, yada, yada. Ah! Stop right there. What did I say? You just said it. You said it. You said it. Let me let's repeat that one more time. Devonte, you just said yeah, Chad Gable had a bunch of momentum and he shouldn't be going to AEW. If I'm, yep, there you go right there. Now, can you tell how much momentum Ricochet has at the moment? The last time I seen this guy, the last time I even noticed Ricochet, he was getting over on fucking Elon Musk's platform. That, that's what he was doing. He was, he was being used to get over his wrestling matches in five minutes on Elon Musk's platform. Not even television, not even YouTube. He couldn't even, you couldn't even bear to book the guy on fucking YouTube. You couldn't even give him anything on fucking, you couldn't even give him the goddamn pre-dark match on fucking YouTube. You had to put him somewhere on Twitter, right? So this benefits everybody, right? In the case of Ricochet, it benefits him super duper well because he's gonna go out there, he's gonna kick, he's gonna flip, and he's gonna make a bunch of money doing what he loves to do. And at the same time, there might be an opportunity that will arise where, who knows, the guy really just wants to do all this in order to prove himself to WWE. I don't blame Ricochet in that regards. 
that's one side of the puzzle. Then we come to the next side of the puzzle in regards to WWE allowing him to leave like this. Now, granted, like I said, if there was an extension tied to it or anything like that, even better. It makes him look a lot better in my eyes in regards to Ricochet because he is absolutely a nobody in your company. Now, he, see, here's the thing. Personally speaking, I'm not what i wouldn't necessarily say that i'm not a fan of ricochet i like ricochet's and ring work for the most part i wish there was something a little bit more attached to him i would definitely say when it comes to ricochet he's a boring character but in regards to what he can do in the ring if there was a story attached to it yes i could see myself falling in love with a match that Rico ricochet actually performs the problem with ricochet is that he doesn't have a character the problem with Ricochet is that he can't sell me on any of his fucking matches. If a guy like Ricochet can sell you on his kicks and flips and backflips and shooting star presses and 450s and all that shit, good for you. Like Nirvana said, you're easily amused. I'm not though. I'm the kind of guy who wants to sit back and I want the overall package though. When I go to the movies, I want my popcorn, I want my orange fizzy soda, I want some of those crunch balls they sell in the blue boxes. I want to be able to spend my $49 on my $3 snacks and I want to watch my IMAX video with my 3D glasses on sitting back and having someone yell in the crowd while I tell them to shut the fuck up and then they yell back at me, then we get into a fight and then I punch their baby in the face because I'm trying to get my revenge and that guy is way too big but i gotta show him that i'm fucking tough and you may say to yourself devonta you're not tough by punching the baby and then i turn around and i say i beat your mom's ass the other day so shut the fuck up before i kick your ass and then we go back and forth like that what the fuck am i talking about oh yeah ricochet when i look at wwe i say to myself you weren't really doing much with the guy in the end of the day right dude was nothing more than a void willing to be filled so he's gone now now you have all that extra income to do whatever the fuck you want to do in regards to maybe bringing up maybe two NXT superstars who might be worth his contract alone, right? More importantly, it's Ricochet's spot. Like an Andrade El Idolo, he already took that spot. <laughs> His speed spot after complaining about how Spanish people are booked on the roster. <laughs> Swing, Triple H! <laughs> Big nose man still got it going on. That dude said, You think I'm not booking Spanish people? Well, Andrade El Idalo? Como? <laughs> okay, come here. Come here. Come here. Yeah, drop your suitcases. Drop your sombrero. Get your ass on speed and win that motherfucking belt. You're going to be a champion. I'm going to book some fucking Latinos in the correct way. Get your ass on speed. You're going to be my number one guy on speed. <laughs> Burst! But, like I said, there was a void worth being filled, and he's already doing what he has to do in order to write Ricochet off for television in order to have that void being filled. Not to mention, and this is just my own personal perspective when looking at Ricochet, like I said, I don't really fuck with the guy character at all. I like his wrestling, but that doesn't really do much for me. I mean, me saying that I like your wrestling is no different than saying I like your french fries. Can I have a burger with those fries if you don't mind? But, in the end of the day, with Triple H or WWE or anybody in regards to all this it in my opinion brings goodwill to the company as far as making them look a little bit more charitable that they're not gonna bullshit or pull any strings when it comes to Ricochet like I said I'm not sure if well, actually did I say that in the article or did I just see the quote somewhere else I think I seen the quote somewhere else I, but I did mention it earlier Ricochet saying that he wants to bet on himself and there's a bunch of people in WWE who are applauding him there are a bunch of people in WWE who are saying to themselves you know what Ricochet you go you, you go bet on yourself or go out there make a name for yourself come back to the company when you have a bigger name go pull a Drew McIntyre go pull a Cody Rhodes we're rooting for you not really hopefully if you make a splash big enough we'll turn around but as of right now we're rooting for you with our backs turned but like i said nevertheless though it's a lot of goodwill for the company to look so charitable to not pull any bullshit in regards to ricochet you know the man fits up i mean at least at this moment in time he fits better in aew i think i pulled a poll out a couple of months ago when i asked you guys what superstar would you not mind seeing going to aew and there was like over 60 percent. it was overwhelming people wanted to see ricochet go to aew if for nothing else if you don't care for ricochet because you know 
that's the spot where he currently belongs at the moment when you look at his style and you look at the rest of the roster style in AEW. Now, I will say with all the positives, and trust me, this is like 95% positive going all the way around. Sugar is being splashed everywhere. You guys open up your mouth. Now close it. Now suck it. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I get it. Everybody's happy about Ricochet. Ricochet's happy about Ricochet. WWE's happy about Ricochet. AEW's happy about Ricochet. The one negative, small negative that I do have to bring up because it is the elephant sitting in the room. And no, I'm not talking about Samantha Irving. I'm not calling her an elephant, by the way. I'm just saying that she's an elephant in the room. I'm not saying that either. I'm lying. Why am I lying like that? I fuck the shit out of Samantha Irving. I make her hit those high vocals that she did when she was singing uh, Bray Wyatt's Farewell. I actually fuck her while she's singing Bray Wyatt's Farewell a little bit too edgy probably she can edge me though aew ricochet sounds like a perfect parent but the atomic town is the one booking aew now what are they gonna do with ricochet once he gets into the company hmm are they gonna book him in the perspective of you know continuing his uh upward trajectory when he was in wwe you know, this is the chance that AEW can do just like they did with Swerve Strickland when they took a WWE talent and they put a world championship belt on him, right? You can do the exact same thing with Ricochet. Obviously, I know he wants to get the Will Ospreay stuff out of the way. But my question is, like I said, when focusing on him and Ricochet, for an example, let's just hypothetically say Will Ospreay and Ricochet ends up being the match. How would you book that? What is the perspective as far as how you're going to book that going forward? My fear when looking at someone like Ricochet going to AEW, especially after telling WWE that he's willing to bet on himself, that he's willing to grow as a superstar, is that he will be absolutely stagnant within the company, and he's not going to have any reason to feel that he has to grow because of the way Tony Khan books, especially with a guy like him, especially with a guy like him in comparison to all the other superstars currently in that uh, company. He's probably going to look at it like, well, goddamn, he's such a great wrestler. Let him go out there, let him wrestle, and that's going to be my reasoning for why I book him, because wrestling. No going out there and cutting promos and giving time and angles and stuff like that. It's wrestling, which eventually will get boring. Not saying Ricochet is boring, but because there are so many people who, re who wrestle like a Ricochet, especially in AEW, I just have a bad feeling that he's going to get lost in the shuffle immediately after Tony Khan gets done playing with his favorite toy for the month, right? then what what's the upward trajectory you're going to end up going for once you're done being tony's favorite toy for the month huh all that reasoning for why you left wwe for them to take a look at you when you bet on yourself is that really gonna come to fruition when the time comes that's my fear when it comes to Russia, at least for me coolio that you're gonna do all this stuff and you're gonna go the cody rose and drew mcintyre route that's fucking awesome i hope you thrive like i said everybody from both sides extremely positive about the interaction and the dismissal and the departure it feels like everybody left on good terms but what really is going to be ricochet when he does not inevitably go to aew because at that point in time what are you really betting on if you're not really in control right you get what I'm trying to say? Like, you say that your future is in your own hands, when in reality, your future is in the hands of a coke out of fucking Chia Pet. Do you really, really, really want to fucking put your trust into that? Do you really, 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 really want to take your believe in yourself motto and hope for the best because of this fucking loser over here who's probably busy snorting lines off his cell phone while he's texting bots messages all over it, fucking social media? Really? This is the guy that you trust right here, huh? Shia LaBeouf's retarded half-brother from fucking, I don't know, Palestine or some shit? Well, good luck with that. I, I would definitely be rooting for Ricochet. You can you can bet your bottom dollar. You can, you can bet your skibbity. I will be cheering for Ricochet. And hopefully there will be a spot in time where he does compete the WWE. More primed. More knowledgeable. And hopefully having his fundamentals a little bit more in tune with whatever angle hopefully WWE puts him in if he ever returns back to the company if he ends up being the star the likes of a Cody Rhodes or a Drew McIntyre time must wait time must come and we must have patience as always my name is Devontae let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below now I'm gonna go goon to some Powerpuff Girls no <gasps>